Hello everyone, my name is Ivan and I am from Team Croatia and I will be presenting uh, our solution to the problem number one Tesla coil engine. Just a quick recap of the problem. So the problem uh, asks us um, to explain the effect of putting a wire on a Tesla coil and it starts rotating. So we need to explain that effect. We have to optimize the mechanical and electrical components of that problem in order to maximize uh, rotational velocity and lastly we have to uh, we have to investigate the uh, efficiency of uh, of that setup in comparison to electrical engines so to start with uh, we will start with the theoretical model so we observe we observe one end of the wire with some uh, with some area and when we put a wire on a Tesla coil and uh, we turn it on, a uh, huge voltage uh, is, uh, it becomes uh, available and the air ionizes and becomes conducted. Uh, we then observe a plasma uh, which uh, hits the air and then the air expands and we, uh, we observe the, fo we, we are investigating the force that, uh, that occurs with the with uh, with the uh, with uh, this in, uh, in, with this formula f is equals dp per dt uh, over dt. Uh, the total force will, will be proportional to the number of particles that uh, hit uh, the wire, a uh, wire, and uh, the oh, we have the number of particles per unit time is we model uh, the number of particles with Maxwell distribution, which uh, which can be seen here. Uh, next, uh, we uh, suppose that the collision is elastic, so that uh, change of momentum uh, is given by this expression, and then the force is just uh, area of that wire times uh, um, concentration and temperature and constant K. And that finally gets us to the torque that uh, is present uh, at the wire, uh, but we uh, have to integrate it over or with this integral and we, we obtain this expression but also there are other torques in this problem first is the torque that is uh, present because of friction on the surface so here is the picture and um, it's uh, me mg and d is the distance that is f of course wire cannot be uh, on a surface in one point so we have some distance and uh, d is this distance, and we have twice of that, so that's a factor two. Also, there is a drag force. So, for our for our designs, we have this length l and this length uh, and this uh, height h, and the drag force is given by expression one half one half one half over uh, times rho v squared uh, c d a. And we have to integrate. So we uh, we have two components of drag force. One is here, and one is here. And uh, we integrate over that dimension. And that, that is this torque for this. And analogs, uh, uh, analog to that, we have torque this torque for this. OK. So summing that up, summing all torques, we have a, to a torque component from our uh, collisions, uh, friction, and drag force. And now, furthermore, if we equate uh, an angular acceleration to zero from this equation, uh, um, so I alpha is d dot, we get this we get this expression for the angular velocity. And why is that important? It will, it will come clearer later. Okay. So as for the experimental setup, uh, we have a Tesla coil. Obviously, and this is our uh, setup where we filmed it. It's a little bit bad quality, but it will be. It will have videos later. Okay, so the method is uh, we made uh, wires of various shapes and sizes. This is one of our models. Uh, so to make wires consistent, and then we filmed it and tracked. Uh, Angular, the function of the um, 
a functional dependence of angle with respect to time, and we used an open source program called Tracker to, to find us that. And here are our results. So this graph shows uh, angle theta with respect to time for various um, uh, wires. So here is the legend. B uh, means bend. So uh, I will show I will show the uh, design of that. So S is okay. So various designs, various powers, and various frequencies. And this is what we obtain. <laughs> We can, see, we can see the trends that, it, that the, uh, the angle is, has larger derivation, the derivative uh, with larger power. Also, we, from that, we can also obtain angular velocities. And we again see that we see also here that trend. And uh, now for the prediction. We, uh, we taped the moment when, so we, we applied, we uh, turned on the Tesla coil, it spins, uh, we uh, then plug it off like this, so it spins, then we turn it off, and then let it spin. So in the first moment, uh, both the drag and friction are relevant, but as the wire comes to, to the uh, velocity zero, at close velocity, we can, we can um, observe this interval of time, and there we can, uh, we can neglect the drag and only observe uh, the force of friction. We then observe in that time interval the angular acceleration and measure our uh, coefficient of friction there. Our uh, me d that is, and then we can go back, then and and also calculate this um, um, rho c d, because uh, okay, and then next when it accelerates, then th that's also that's the second case. We can. Calculate the product and t, which is very tricky to calculate for this problem, uh, because uh, obviously there is no obvious way to calculate the temperature of the plasma uh, in near volume of the wire. Uh, then, um, after having all these parameters, uh, we use the formula which I said before, when, uh, when well, uh, where we equated uh, angular acceleration with zero, because what happens? The wire starts spinning and it accelerates to a certain moment when uh, when termi terminal velocity occurs, uh, and that also can be uh, seen in these graphs, theta t. You see, there is a, obviously a parabola. It accelerates, but then it's a it's a, a line. That means angular velocity is constant. And then we can, uh, with that uh, angular constant, we have predictions. So we can, for every wire, we can predict with these parameters what will final the terminal angular velocity be. And then we uh, predicted our theoretical measure, uh, theoretical predictions uh, with experiments, and this is what we get. So this line is there, the same. So. Uh, and, uh, this, and these are what we uh, actually measured. And it fits and it, uh, uh, it agrees with our experiment very well. So these, are, these dots are different wires for which we measured angular velocity. Uh, so as for the, uh, as for the efficiency, um, uh, our best efficiency for the best wire was uh, 2.10 to the minus 4%, which is really uh, and in comparison, efficiency of electric engines can be easily over 90%. So this obviously isn't efficient electric engine. Um, and to conclude, uh, we proposed a model which explains the effect. We tested it and uh, tested its predictions, and it agreed with our model. We optimized uh, parameters <coughs> to maximize rotational velocity. Um, I will. I hope I will have opportunity to talk about that more in discussions with opponent and uh, we compare the efficiency of our wire to electric motors. Uh, thank you all for attention.
Um, and I'd like to thank the reporter on the great presentation for the Tesla call problem. Yeah, uh, we're from Team Australia, and today we'll be uh, opposing this problem. So again, going back to the problem description, first of all, uh, what we needed to do is to place a thin metal wire on top of a Tesla coil uh, and observe its rotation, explain the effect, uh, and essentially what causes this, um, this phenomenon. Uh, as well as that, treating this rotational um, wire as an engine, uh, optimizing the electrical and mechanical parts of the system to maximize the, uh, to maximize the rotational speed. Uh, and finally, to calculate the efficiency or estimate, get some kind of an estimate for the efficiency of the engine compared to a conventional electrical engine. So overall, I believe the reporter had a uh, reasonably well set out solution to the problem. Um, uh, it was nicely set out, uh, and uh, in terms of positives, uh, it started uh, first of all talking about the ionization of particles uh, around the two ends of the wires, which uh, causes uh, some torque to be applied to the wire and causes a rotation, so that is good. Uh, I believe the mechanical aspects of the system were uh, identified and um, explored thoroughly. Um, so you also discussed the contribution of friction, uh, drag, and other mechanical parts uh, to the torque, and therefore the, the rotational accelerations and velocities, which was great. Um, you had a great experimental setup, which was uh, good to see, uh, with a small Tesla coil and getting the wires to rotate on top of it. Um, yes, so you also had uh, essentially the point with the elimination of the contribution of sparks to measure the drag coefficient which was also great. So in terms of uh, negatives, uh, the main point that I'd like to um, discuss was first of all, uh, some of the measurements that you showed uh, showed no errors, no error measurements, no uncertainties. Uh, perhaps one of the most important points is that, uh, yes, you discuss in great details the mechanical aspects of the problem. However, uh, there was a distinct lack of, um, I suppose, electrical analysis. So. Uh, in terms of that, what I mean is uh, how does how do the parameters of the Tesla coil themselves affect the rotation of the of the curve? So that includes things like uh, the frequency of the oscillatory wave within the Tesla coil, its amplitude, um, things like that. Um, so moving on, um, again uh, with the testing of um, the problem with different wires. Uh, your presentation did not include a lot of evidence uh, of testing um, essentially this rotation with different geometries for the wire. So, for example, uh, different lengths, obviously uh, you did specify the geometry, however, what happens if the diameter is changed? Uh, what happens uh, if the mass density of the wire changes? Um, other mechanical aspects of that as well were not uh, clarified or explained. Uh, and last note, which wasn't uh, too big of a deal, but uh, I feel like there was a lot of equations on the on the slides, a lot of terms that were not explained clearly, uh, so it would be good to go through those. Uh, again, uh, the main discussion points that I have is, first of all, uh, moving on to the, uh, the mechanical aspects, again, were explained greatly, moving on to the electrical parts of the system, how do you think they affect the rotation, uh, and how do you think uh, they would essentially interpret any kind of... Um, interactions in your results. Uh, another small question I had is whether or not uh, using the Boltzmann distribution um, for the estimation of, of or for the modeling of the particles at the ends of the wire, uh, whether or not that is justified and how would you essentially justify that. Um, lastly, the last point I had was um, you gave us a measure of the efficiency of the engine. Um, however, um, I would just uh, essentially, it was just a bit unclear for me uh, as to how you got that measurement. Uh, and again, uh, there was no real uncertainty bounds on this. Uh, again, uh, one more thing is going back to different geometries and different, um, essentially, mass densities of wires. How do you think they would uh, impact the, velo uh, the rotational velocity? And if you had something a lot lighter, whether or not you would be able to get greater efficiencies. So that's all. Thank you. Okay, you can proceed to the discussion. Excellent. Okay. I was hoping for that kind of question because unfortunately I didn't have time to address them all. So okay. how may you optimize the electrical components and config configuration? Uh, well, on our graph, uh, we, if, I mean, I can show you, but. If you want to. But but <coughs> 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 
Uh, so we have, we on that graph we see a trend of uh, power, which is proportional to the amplitude, uh, and we also see uh, that we override uh, frequency. Uh, we have uh, so on this uh, Tesla coil we had a button which with which we can vary frequency and power, and we did both. Uh, so we also in one at one instance put a ring around the wire, so it it would. Um, have a better ground to to jump on, but yeah. I think the most um, the, the the way we improved most was insulating the car, uh, the wire because what we observed with the uh, naked wire is that it would discharge on every part of the wire, mm -hmm. and then uh, we wouldn't have um, we wouldn't have a clear force on one place where we wanted to. So it, of course, when uh, we, we can't bend it a lot, um, so smoothly that, that it doesn't have shapes. Wherever yeah. wire has shapes, it will discharge easier from that point. Mm -hmm. So the best uh, the best thing we did is that we put a, we put a isolation on the whole part of the wire except for the uh, sh uh, for the spikes. Yes. Uh, also, you asked for the justification of the Boltzmann uh, distribution. Yeah. Uh, well, that can be explained in the in the regime of high temperature. You would expect a lot of uh, ad, uh, available um, uh, states, and I don't see why we wouldn't have uh, Maxwell okay. uh, distribution. Uh, yeah, also, that's, that's pretty much all I was asking for. But yeah. Uh, and uh, um, what yeah, was in terms that? of your measured uh, oh, efficiency. efficiency. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, we took our fastest uh, wire, and we simply uh, in, uh, we simply did a product uh, of uh, inertia times uh, rotational uh, velocity squared over two, and divided it by the power we measured that we gave into the Tesla coil. And it turned out yeah. we we took on the, the our best result. So. Okay. Efficiency would be in my in my in my in my view the best we could get for that the R okay, setup. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So for the setup you had uh, yes. now, um, how do you think that would? How do you think the efficiency would change if the wire was lighter? Did you do any kind of theoretical or uh, quantitative description of how that would change it? I mean, obviously, from from first in first hand, it depends. Friction depends on mass. So yeah. it would it would have uh, the higher higher mass the wire has uh, it has more friction, but uh, yeah. out of point blank we we investigated many more parameters like uh, in moment of inertia obviously also plays a huge role, yeah. and um, I would also I didn't uh, didn't have the time but I would like to yeah. explain this which yeah, is very yeah. weird. So yeah. in uh, auto tracker uh, we had a curve of theta over time. Yeah. And when we exported the data to Qt plot, this weird thing happened. It's not physical, okay. it's just, I don't know what happened, but we didn't want to erase the data, okay, yeah, so we yeah. left it like that. Uh, so like my... In, my auto, yeah. in auto tracker we only had this. Right, okay. And, but we can't, we can't uh, do linear regressions and okay, analysis yeah. in... Yeah, uh, maybe I wasn't paying enough attention during the presentation, but my thought about these uh, drops and also in the angles you could also see the drop it was just that the wire has rotated 100 or 360 degrees and it goes back to its initial rotational point. Yeah, no, 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 no. So if it, you reckon it's not because of that? No. Okay, yeah, yeah, sure. Um, yeah, um, going to uh, again the, um, the electrical parts of the mm -hmm. system. How do you think the, uh, the essentially the changing um, electromagnetic field at the top of the Tesla core, right, where you've got the thing uh, so you've got the magnetic field coming from the inductor itself, uh, which is mostly pointed in a vertical direction, mm -hmm. and you've got uh, the changing electric field uh, as the uh, as the current pumps through to the top and goes goes down to the bottom again. How do you think that electromagnetic field would change the results? Does that actually affect the charge distributions on the wire, and does that induce any kind of maybe a Lorentz force on the wire, perhaps? Um, maybe, maybe I think. I didn't think of that, but I think the relevant uh, the relevant uh, aspect is only the amplitude of electric field. I mean, okay. it's um, it's a, uh, I think when I thought about it, it's uh, electric field amplitude, but up to a, some, uh, a certain threshold. So in our model, we have geometry of the wire, yeah, yeah. and we have. My name is Marcus Alm. I'm representing the team of Sweden, uh, and I will uh, review the. Uh, Tesla coil problem. 
uh, which was, uh, which was uh, presented uh, by Ivan and opposed by uh, yeah, Alman. So the report itself. Uh, the report had a very basic explanation uh, uh, of the phenomenon uh, of the motion, uh, which had the air heating up uh, around the tips, uh, created a uh, torque, and was reduced by the friction and air drag. And the Tesla uh, and different wires was uh, examined and had, they had a very uh, extensive theoretical model about the different forces that they found acted on, uh, on these. It was, however, a lot of uh, unclear graphs, uh, and uh, some of the graphs showed different varying uh, results but the different, for different wires, but the wi uh, difference in wires was never explained. And uh, the assumptions for, uh, behind the theory was not clearly stated, so we couldn't really uh, see what a lot of like, we knew it was uh, based on uh, heat and heat expansion, but not really what the, uh, the heat itself expanded and what that created to make the actual mo uh, motion. Uh, the efficiency was uh, stated, but not anything about how they actually got that number, and uh, there was error bars missing on uh, results and the red book uh, graphs. The opposition, uh, first and foremost, acknowledged the good parts of the uh, presentation, uh, but uh, they found that, uh, some missing parameters, like the electrical contributions and the uh, missing discussion on uh, different wire properties. Uh, but they did not bring up uh, any uh, discussion on the Tesla coil uh, itself, although mentioning that the electrical uh, properties were missing in, uh, in the discussion. And it didn't also not uh, bring up the discussion any part of the sparks, uh, as we see as part of the phenomenon. Because only the motion part of the <coughs> phenomenon that we see in the videos has have been explained, but the sparks are not created uh, by the thermal expansion. The discussion was uh, elaborated uh, on going into electrical properties, uh, like the Altman and efficiency. They covered all the discussion points brought up the, uh, by the opposition, and uh, uh, you brought, also brought up the influence of the magnetic field. Uh, however, there was no, uh, there was a missing discussion on the uh, propulsion, propulsion mechanism. Uh, you did, uh, the opponent didn't lead the discussion and didn't uh, also not bring up a lot of uh, yeah. own, uh, opinions. Uh, they were asking uh, questions to the uh, reporter uh, and continued with the different, uh, different uh, questions. So in summary, the task was uh, partially fulfilled with a good setup, but missing explanations and parametric uh, vari okay, variations. So the yeah, so the discussion points, uh, propulsion mechanism. So if we start by asking the reporter, uh, what was the exact uh, propulsion mechanism? What actually made uh, the wire spin around? Did you want to explain that in more detail? Yeah, I think um, I'll repeat. So first, high voltage means air will get ionized, means it becomes conductive, means we will have discharge, then discharge heats the air, air starts uh, expanding, expanding particles uh, collide into the wire, and uh, uh, there is a, a force because of that elastic collision, which then uh, creates a torque on the wire, which then spins. And then I explained also other forces in the, in the, the system. Yeah, the, the other forces was uh, were clearly stated. It was the actual propulsion uh, force, uh, but that was due to uh, the discharge creating uh, heat. Then. Yes, and that also explains the sparks. Yes, uh, thank you. And the uh, opponent yeah. uh, was uh, is this uh, uh, the same uh, propulsion mechanism uh, as you so, find? Is, uh, is this yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So obviously, um, we believe that. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, sure. Thank you. No worries. Yeah, so again, yeah, we believe that, yes, um, this mechanism a, a, is essentially one part, of uh, one part that contributes to the propulsion of the, of the thing, which is essentially the creation of uh, some essentially pressure difference, uh, the release of heat, which then induces the torque, as uh, the reporter mentioned. Uh, however, we also believe that, um, um, depending on the properties of the Tesla coil itself, uh, there could also be electromagnetic forces uh, induced in the charges, uh, on the charges within the wire, uh, which then also introduces uh, more uh, electromagnetic forces, which also lead to proportion. Uh, so those those are the two mechanisms that I believe are the leading uh, proportion mechanisms. Okay, so about these uh, electromagnetic uh, forces, uh, are they due to 
uh, the field uh, that the yeah, yeah. Uh, oil creates, or is this yeah. due to something in the wires? Yeah, so um, it is uh, essentially, okay, so what we've got is, uh, let's assume that the wire has electrical contact with the, or with the top of the Tesla coil. What you've got is that uh, there's going to be a periodic, uh, essentially, charge uh, build up and discharge at the top of the co uh, coil as the current moves up and down periodically. So what that does is that it creates, depending on obviously the geometry of the uh, toroid on top of the Tesla coil, it will create uh, some kind of uh, oscillating electric field. Uh, and as well as that, there's the vertical magnetic field, which reduces and or which decreases and increases in amplitude. And so based okay, on so that- Okay, so it's shifting in, in the- yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and so what we've got then is if you, um, if you then assume obviously negative charge carriers within the, uh, within the um, wire itself, what you then get is that it, this change in electromagnetic field will induce a Lorentz force. Okay, so it's Lorentz force that's the uh, main proportion there. Uh, well, it is, we're not just, 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 it's just a Yes or no, it, it, it's, yes. It, it's adding to it. Yes, yeah, thank it's you. a component. Uh, does a reporter, uh, has a reporter considered uh, the Lorentz force? No, 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 no I don't think force. that. Can you please uh, draw the force? How is it? <coughs> um, <coughs> it's probably going to take some time. Just, just call it a picture okay. and magnetic field. Yeah, sure. So we've got some wire <coughs> here with obviously some. Yeah, we have 30 this. seconds until the. <laughs> <laughs> here is the, the toroid and here is the thing. So we've got a magnetic field, assuming that it doesn't die down by the time it gets up there. So the magnetic field of the inductor. And then we've got, as the current I, as a function of T, yeah, sure. where, where oscillates, it's going to create an oscillatory charge and discharge at the top of the coil, which then creates an electric field. Uh, the change in this electromagnetic field is then going to affect the charge carriers here, inducing a lot. Okay, but isn't the problem uh, would you uh, just first, uh, it, 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 do you understand uh, what yeah, yeah, but are the why would there Why would there be any net force? Sorry, sorry. Uh, do, do you understand the, uh, the additional contributions this, this would face? Just I quickly do. before I release the floor. I will add on to this. Yeah, I... Okay. Okay, if you have a better question. Opponent, do you think uh, this uh, would spin in, in vacuum? Sorry? Do you think this would spin in vacuum? Assuming just the electromagnetic yeah. forces, yes. Because we know it doesn't spin vacuum, you have it in electrobooms video. Sorry? He tried it. It doesn't spin in vacuum. Okay. Um, we, well, I'm okay. not so, uh, so, so could uh, there be any uh, problems with, uh, with the Lorentz force uh, then? No, could there, uh, okay. there be any additional forces I mean, that could be come up? <laughs> first of all, um, so far, we haven't discussed the magnitude of this force. Perhaps it isn't enough uh, of a force to actually I'm create sorry, some kind of okay. rotation. Thank you. Thank you. I remind you that uh, the point results should be presented in a briefly way and uh, sticking to the reporter's work and report's presentation firstly. Okay. Okay. Uh, <coughs> Taking a question from the Swedish team. Yes, all right. Uh, I would like to ask both the reporter and the opponent uh, what you're saying here about the heat expansion is con uh, contributing well, to the torque. What you're essentially saying is equivalent, so if we have, let's say, a pencil and we put it on some frictionless material and we take a cigarette lighter and put it behind it, we will also have expansion of air. Yeah, but, but usually that is that really, uh, considering that the wire is very thin also, and uh, the area for the, well, the expanding air to collide with it, is this really reasonable? Because in that case, we would also see by just putting a cigarette lighter behind a pencil, that will start moving. No, you Thank you. Uh, the reporter wanted to I don't <laughs> think you would because the order of magnitude of temperature is 10 to the to three orders of magnitude higher in plasma. So the order of magnitude of plasma is 10 to the 4 kelvins, and the lighter is 10 to the yeah. 2. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, sorry? I, I, I think the uh, yeah. question is uh, uh, that the fire uh, is a form of plasma, so uh, it, it's not just a temperature plasma itself. So. Yeah. The question will be about how the voltage contributes to the phenomenon. Sorry, sorry, can you louder, please? How does the high voltage produced by Tesla contribute to the phenomenon? Uh, how you mean how the how with higher amplitude we get uh, higher velocity? Why high voltage is needed? Because I need to ionize air and uh, to have plasma. 
So essentially, it will what depend on the. It will. Let's say there's some capacitance between the um, the medium surrounding the thing and and the top and the tip of the coil. So that's where that discharge is going to come from. Depends on the capacitance between. The okay. Was that a sufficient explanation? Thank you. Uh, I question from Brady. Pull back to what the reporting team said. So you stated that you tested it in a vacuum. Can you expand on those tests and what you found? Yeah. Uh, well, uh, could, could the reporter uh, have yeah, a conversation? I mean, Explain. I mean, uh, we didn't. Uh, uh, there wasn't any rotation. So. <laughs> did you think that? Uh, so did I miss that in the presentation? Did you think that would be not uh, necessary to discuss? No, I mean, as he said, that there is evidence in the videos of electro boom that I mean, we could, we don't have uh, such a large bell to create vacuum, and we didn't do it ourselves. Okay, can you take for the sake of the argument. Okay. That sounds like it's sufficient. Yes. Uh, the uh, Swedish team looks like they have uh, <laughs> a few more questions. Okay. Um, just both of you. Um, the first you reported, did you verify the uh, reports that you reported? Did you vary any of like, the voltage or frequency of your setup? Mm -hmm. Yes, both. Actually, both. Okay. It can be seen on that graph. Okay, now we proceed to the questions from jury members. Yeah. Uh, to the report, uh, I may have missed it because, uh, but uh, you say that you cannot measure the temperature, mm -hmm. but to your experimental, uh, your theoretical model, use it. So how did you get the temperature to put in your exper uh, theoretical result? We got it from literature. So we took our data. We uh, we searched how much. Uh, someone as uh, someone measured with better equipment temperature of plasma. But is that your question? <laughs> no, that's it. <laughs> okay. You had on slide 12, I think it was, you had this product of NT. Mm -hmm. What was that? 10. Uh, <coughs> NT, uh -huh, okay, that was the product of um, concentration and uh, temperature. So that is, that's uh, what. Um, that term uh, occurred in our expression for the torque. And since we didn't know the temperature, we had to uh, had a detour to, uh, to determine it. So we uh, determined the product. Be because also... Okay, it's the product of what? It's temperature times something Concentration, yes. What per cubic meter? Uh, 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 air molecules. Temperature times air molecules? Yes. Because we know that the data for sure for standard, uh, uh, for standard uh, <coughs> conditions, but we don't know exactly what that number is in the conditions of temperature of plasma. Um, so, so in this case, you mean M is the concentration. It states T, uh, it, should be, it should say T minus T room, but it, uh, that the part is uh, not shown because uh, T is much larger than the room temperature. But the uh, numerical value was 4.4 times 10 to minus 3. That sounds like much no, less no, than room no, temperature no, no, no. times. It was of order 25. Was it 25? 23. Go Sorry. Sure. Um, what do I need to connect? I mean, you had it. Mr. Okay. You had an output for it. Yeah, it this one. This one. Okay. There, we go. there it is. Doesn't it say 23? <laughs> that says, uh, uh, sorry, I mean, it's, I can bring you the laptop if you. It says 25, I, just, I can't read it. I think it's at 20, 23. <laughs> 4.4 times 10 to the 23 kelvins per, per, per meter squared. Okay, so that's less than room temperature times the number of molecules in a cubic meter. Can we agree on that? Uh, yeah. But with the data of standard conditions. Okay, any more questions, Mark? Uh, within our universe and physics, what is the maximum angular velocity one can achieve with a setup of a Tesla co coil and whatever uranium pro crowbar line? <laughs> <laughs> whatever? <laughs> what, what, whatever, a, any shape or any material, what is the limiting maximum velocity possible for yourself? Well, since wire is rigid body, I have a relation for the angular velocity and linear velocity, so I guess that is the conditions. I mean, linear velocity cannot be bigger than C, obviously. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>
Thanks. Okay. Any more questions from the members? Uh, Richard? Yeah. Um, for one of your plots, you say that you get artifacts from your plotting process. Mm -hmm. uh, so you say that your plotting pipeline is corrupted somewhere. How are we supposed to know which graphs is actually worth something and which are just artifacts? I can show you the, from the uh, tracker data. I mean, so I you, you have another one to check? Yes. And you still show, show us something corrupted? I mean, because I couldn't put on the uh, tracker more plots, and I thought it would be more instructive to show a trend. Yeah, no, 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 you, yes. but, but we can trust all the users. Yes, yeah, there are others. Okay. okay, if there are no more questions, let us applaud all the participants.